Good evening, Canada and the rest of the world. Live from Bauhaus Studios in beautiful downtown Port Credit, it's the Tom and Rick Show for Wednesday, August the 12th. Tonight's guests are Dave Murphy, Julia and Lauren from the Studio Paint Bar, live by remote from beautiful Costa Rica is John Chantry, Cooking with Carson, and Undercover of Darkness with Rickford, Chris Cadell, and Jimmy Reed. And now your hosts, Tom and Rick. Good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Tom and Rick Show. It's been a fantastic week. We got to see Kurt Godwin live Man. at Spice. We got to see the legendary Dave Murphy. Yes. Live. Live. Live music in beautiful downtown Park Credit. It was amazing. Oh, Spice was so fantastic. The shore has always been great, and now we got live music. It's coming back. And how many cases do we have? 33. Which is Yesterday, going there were 33 new cases. In the positive direction for us, as well as everybody else. Absolutely. Folks, before we get into the show, we have a few updates. First of all, the BIA update. Rick, you were hanging out with Jake the other day, and yeah, he said there's a Jason, new initiative. Jake, yes, there's a new initiative. It's called Hashtag Turn Left, and it's a... More to develop the businesses left of the village when you go down here in Ontario. Instead of turning right down where everybody goes, right. why don't you try to turn left and see what uh, that east side, side has to offer? We got to check out the east side. And speaking of the east side, every Thursday in August from 5 to 9, there is a car meet. 40 classic cars and nine musicians. We're yes. Getting paid. Getting We're paid getting paid. Well, that's fantastic. Thank you for the Port Credit BIA for that. Our friend mm -hmm. Kevin Bath has asked us to let the world know that he is doing a Classics Albums Live uh, production of Rumors, 8 p.m. tonight, right tonight, after this show. Stream, Check stream. that out. Our friends in the pink leather jackets yes. came in second in the 97.7 Hits FM um, Monster Rock competition, song competition, whatever that was, they came in second, so good for those guys. Um, and we have an announcement about Rockadox, fantastic live music venue here in Port Credit. Yep. They are now open 12 to 9, Monday to Sunday, and they are open inside from 4 to 9, Thursday to Sunday. Go to Rockadox, say hi to Johnny, tell him to put some music on there, but still, they've been open for a while, we just forgot to mention it, but it's great food, and they got the only um, rooftop, patio. rooftop patio, besides yours, yes. in Port Credit. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, when I first started playing music as a living, which I started doing when I was about 18, there was another young guy about my age. We were both starting at the same time. We were never in a band together, but we have been sort of living this par in this parallel journey through the music business in Canada. He is here today. He is one of the best rock and roll blues piano players in the country. He has played with Everybody. a million superstars, and we have him here today on the show. Dave, welcome to the show. Dave Murphy. What a pleasure to be here, Tom. Thank you so much for having me. Dave, how have you been? How has COVID, COVID been with you? How has it affected your career and your life? And what have you been up to these, these months? Well, I'm alive. I'm here. You know, so I'm, I'm grateful to be alive. Um, that being said, it's been, you know, for people in the music community, it's been a pretty uh, tough, right. tough yes. time. You know, they say all stress comes from uncertainty and there's just like still, you know, for musicians trying to figure out what's the path forward. It's uh, we still have pretty we stressful. Have, at least we have some hope, right? We yeah, have some hope. definitely getting back to being able to at least to play, you know, on stage two, I was quite shocked. They had said you can't even play outside. Yes. Yeah. We so are the same. kind of legally yeah. in the law, like musicians yeah. can't play. We are the only ones that can't. Yeah, you know, so, it was and, almost yeah. like a prohibition. From exactly. Yeah. It something. is. It's like prohibition. It's like, you know, like you, like you, you literally, like it's illegal for you to do the thing you love and the thing that you need to yeah. right. take care of your family. Yeah, I, I can't tell you how. I saw you playing at Shore in the, in the back patio. Yeah, and yeah. Just, it just sort of sent a message, the return is coming. Yes, it's like the spring of it, the it music was, is, you know, being wonderful. upon us. And again. done safely. As, like and, everybody's doing it safely, yeah. so we nobody can't go needs back. to worry. No, nobody we, needs to worry about we're going to be shoulder to shoulder, yeah. you know, so it's yeah. done safely. No, both at Spice very good. and Shore, they, they yeah. did it very well. Timothy's as well. Now, now, we were just discussing that I've probably known you since the late 80s. Yes. Yes, which exactly. Is, which is a long time. A long time. Now, in that time, you have played with all kinds of amazing artists. But the one that I saw in your bio today that I was like, wow, you got to open for James Brown. We got to open for James Brown. One, that was one probably the, an wow. education in itself. One of the greatest experiences of my life. Well, tell us a little about that. About that. Well, so we opened for James Brown at a place called Lulu's, uh, which was this, like, Cambridge. I think it used to be a Kmart. 
Right. Yeah. It was this massive. It was the longest it was bar. Really, in the world. really big place. And and we had played there a lot over the years. And uh, anyway, I don't know how it happened, but I think at that time I was I was really into funk, and we were trying to sort of be a funky band. And someone recommended us, uh, and we got to open for him. And that was on a Saturday night, but on the Friday night before, that was in Kitchener, because Lou was in Kitchener, the, on the Friday night before, he was playing in Toronto at, I think it was called Convocation Hall, the, the, the old uh, Masonic Temple yeah, on uh, Young Hall. and uh, yeah, Davenport. Yeah. And a small, you know, it's not a huge place, so like, we're like right in front, and like, he's my hero. And like, oh my God, it's James Brown. <laughs> and one of the tightest shows I'd ever seen, you know, like the band's just stopping on a dime, everything so perfectly rehearsed. Then the next day, when we go to Lulu's, we get to see... You know, we're loading in and James Brown is on stage rehearsing his band. And we're getting him to sort of see, he's just putting him through the ringer, like making sure everything is perfect. The show we saw that night, night and day different from the show we saw the night previous. Like it was like, wow, they are doing everything on the fly. And, and, and you know, when I was a young musician and watching you and being inspired by this is like, like being in the moment. Right. You know, as opposed to having like whenever we do this song, then we say this thing, then we do this song. This is how every show of our lives goes. Yeah, yeah. It's, so it's one of those things you struggle with because as a, as a musician, you want to play great. Yeah. You want to do justice to the song you've written or that yeah. someone else has written. Mm -hmm. But you also don't don't want to be so locked into it that it's not a little bit dangerous. Yeah. Yes. The element uh, of yeah. danger. And and, is and great. James Brown, I guess, has that danger. Yeah. Like is 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 a kind of perfect juxtaposition between a danger and a discipline yes. to pull it Dis off. Yes. Right. And and some and of Prince the great is the same moments way, happen. Yeah. Prince is the same way. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Really? Oh, he was he was the same way yeah. as James Brown. He took, we went to school uh, looking at James and like and I stop. He would do that in stadiums. And now we stop. I mean, imagine the musicians just going, oh my God, what are we doing? Oh my God. Yeah, but, but, you know? <laughs> but, but, but you're in the moment. Yeah, you're right? in it. You're you know, right. And you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, when you get locked down to a stadium show or an arena show, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, Mark could probably speak to this. Mm -hmm. This pyro goes off at this yeah, section exactly. of the, in the yeah. song. Yeah. Yeah. This light thing happens. This giant thing comes out of the ceiling. You can't go, wow, Dave's rocking the solo tonight. Take a few more bars. No. Because then the yes. whole the whole thing yes. falls apart. Absolutely. And, and you also got to play with probably one of the most legendary Canadian performers, uh, Ronnie Hawkins. Yes. And so you got to be sort of in the pedigree of the band. Yes. What, what yeah, was yeah. it like being on the stage with him, filling those shoes? Um. I was just telling my son the other day that, that you know sometimes you have like recurring nightmares your whole life, like like kind of motifs. Yep. And my whole life, I've had this nightmare of, of like, I'm, I'm just having a good time. I'm having a drink, you know, I'm, uh, and, and uh, all of a sudden, I hear a band go on stage, and it's the band I'm supposed to be in, and I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> and my whole life has been happening, and that's all from playing with Ronnie. That, that he was a James Brown type guy. So like, you know, he wanted everything to be, like, just so, and... and mm -hmm. um, but the awesome thing about playing with him is that he expected so much. He was kind of legendary for that. Like, his, like the, all the guys that played with him, like all the great musicians wanted to play with him. Like if you read the list of who's been in his band, it's really something. And prior to that, most of the bands I'd been in, I'd been, you know, one of the better players. But when I came into that band, I was like, you know, I was really, really young. And these, everyone else was kind of, had played with everyone and done everything. Great learning experience for you. And, and, and right. you learn so much when you're the worst guy in the band. Right. And, and, and you feel the pressure to not let anybody down. Like you want Ronnie to be impressed. You know, you're doing these big shows. You, you want everyone to sort yeah. of feel like you're not dragging a band yeah. down. Right. And I worked like crazy to, uh, you know, to bring myself up to a level where I, they kind of felt like I belonged. That's such a good point. Being the worst guy in the band is mm -hmm. it's probably it's tough thing. on your ego, but man, does it... Does it get to you to be better fast? You know what? Exactly. If, you, if, you're, if you want to get better and your ego can take it, I suggest that everybody do that. You find a band, if you're fortunate enough that they take you and you learn from that, I tell you, you're going to go places. That's yep. for sure. You're going to get better. Like the guy, the guy who was in the band, like uh, different, all sorts of different keyboardists have been in the band over the years. Uh, but one of them was this guy named Stan Celeste, who Ronnie considered to be like the best, and he was like he was like a Doug Riley type guy, like just insane keyboardist. And 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 you know the guys in the band at that time would sort of say, yeah, you know, you're okay, but if you want to get, <laughs> but if you want to get good, listen to this guy, right. listen to what he's doing, and you and you start listening to us like like how am I ever going to do that? Like that's like yeah. insane. Like he's but 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 you want him. But yeah. then you did. 
Yeah, like, you know, yeah, I, sometimes yeah. I like to think kind of like insecurity is the engine of musical progress that you wow. do. Uh, that is pretty Let me profound. just write that down. <laughs> yeah, pretty profound. <laughs> now, now, Dave, it's great to see you at Shore. Um, you would play in Port Credit. Occasionally, you would be a guest. But yes. you're going to be with us more often, it seems. Yeah, the, uh, it looks like the plan is, is that we're going to be doing a duo uh, on Sundays at the shore, you know, uh, whenever we can be there, uh, which is uh, great. We're super excited about that. You know, I think the shore is just an incredible operation. Like, there's a great little scene yep. right. in Port Credit and Marine and the shore right at the uh, center of great. that. So, uh, you know, it's just like super excited to get an opportunity to play there. Well, Dave, it's wonderful catching up, but it's going to be just as wonderful to hear you play music here. So we're going to take a short break. We're going to get Dave set up with his piano, and we will be right back. We are back with the legendary Dave Murphy. And Dave, just before you kick off your tune here, um, the Orbit Room is closed. What a... You were there for... What a loss. How long were you there for? We were there every week for 23 years. Yeah. <laughs> 23 years. The club was open for 25 wow. years, so, you know, and we always kind of felt like the new guys because we weren't there for the first two. Right. 23 years. 23 years. Right Another there. venue down in Toronto. And it was, it was just the greatest place for live music. Like, yeah. no, no TVs, no, no. food. Right. No. There's nothing, nothing to do there but just drink and enjoy the band. Yeah, Tim, what a, what a great guy. And Tim was the greatest owner, I'll tell you. Like, like he, um, he, he just cared so much. All he cared about was that the music is great, I don't care about anything else. Right, fantastic. And and that's kind of a deeply counterintuitive yes. approach to. Uh, but it worked for 25 years. Yeah, exactly. Really, it really did. Yeah, I, I love that they used to have a sign at the end of the bar that says "Turn around." It's a great <laughs> band playing. Wow. Yes, exactly. That's, yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah. Uh, well, Dave, what are you going to play for us tonight? Well, I'm going to play a song uh, that uh, I, I wrote, and I got this got to be on. Um, uh, a record that I did, one of uh, the last records made by the late, great Jeff Healy. Wow. And uh, uh, when he got really sick, instead of just kind of saying, I can't play, the guy did more than anything to, to just keep playing, keep recording, and, and uh, he uh, managed to record this record right before he passed away. And on this record, he got a bunch of us to say, hey, I want you to do a song on my record. It can be anything you want. And I had just a bunch of cover tune ideas that I gave to him, and he said, ah, I don't like any of those. What else you got? I said, well, it's a song I wrote, and uh, just a simple rock and roll tune, and, and he really liked it, and so we just did it. Like, it was like the whole album was just like we were talking about in the moment, like, like no plan, no, okay, let's do it, bang, record, and it's done. Yeah. Right. And that's what Rick and I are gonna do right now. Yeah. Riffing with Rickford. Riffing with Rick. So this is a song legendary about, David uh, legendary. about uh, a, a little parody of uh, consumerism, and it's just about um, when you've got money, you just wanna spend it. Right. All right. All right. It's going to get Dave sorted out here. Okay. All right. Here we go. I wanna buy it, I wanna try it I got an urge and I can't deny it I gotta get it, I need credit Just give it to me before I regret it It's just an old pile of paper and it's weighing me down I'm gonna blow my dough, baby, all over town I wanna use it, gonna abuse it And get another one when I lose it I really crave it, I can't save it I need it now and I can't delay it an old pile of paper and it's weighing me down I'm gonna blow my dough, baby, all of the town It's only money It's only money Spend it, spend it It's only money It's only money You can't live it up without laying it down You gotta blow your dough to make the world go round
really want it, I'm getting on it. Just take the last thing I bought and pawn it. I really love it, I really covet. What do you got? I want more of it. An old pile of paper and it's weighing me down. I'm gonna blow my dough, baby, all over town. It's only money. It's only money. It's only money. It's only money. It's only money, it's only money. Who cares? It's only money. It's only money. It's only money. We just spend it. It's only money. It's only money. It's only money. It's only money. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that was the legendary Dave Murphy. What a treat to have you here tonight, Dave, and we will be right back. Rick! Yeah, that was fun. Welcome back, my friends. We have an exciting treat for you today. We have young entrepreneurs who are doing creative things in our beautiful town of Port Credit. Rick, we were discussing one of our passions in life is painting. Oh, it certainly is mine. I tell you what. A stick man like no other. It's fabulous. <laughs> we have Lauren and Julia from the Studio Paint Bar. That is right in the little plaza or piazza, I think you called it, uh, where um, the port house is. In the courtyard there. Right? Welcome, Lauren. Welcome, Julia. Tell us how you've been. First of all, your masks are fantastic. <laughs> Aren't they gorgeous? They Thank are. You. Do you sell those at the shop? We actually do. They're made by actually a local um, businesswoman entrepreneur herself, Queen Bee Customs. So. She does these masks for us, and they sell like hotcakes because they're so cute. They <laughs> are, and you guys are, are matching it. Tell us a little bit about the Studio Paint Bar, how long you've been there, and what you do. Can I take this off? Sure. sure. All right. Sure. Oh, that they you guys are. Like. Oh, <laughs> this is reveal. what we look like. Wow. So uh, the Studio Paint Bar is a little paint bar, paint and wine bar, in the heart of Port Credit. And we focus on making art accessible for everyone. So um, exposing people to either like doing paint nights, which is our most popular offering, where people come and they learn how to paint something from scratch, and they have good wine and good food and really great company while they're at it. We also have art programs to you know, instill a sense of community within our um, little place of Port Credit, so we liaise between um, local artists and the regular clients that we have who might not ever be able to be exposed to arts. So we bring that together by providing free space on our walls to display art. We do all sorts of art programs. We um, allow to open up our space for art events and stuff like that. So for us, community is very important and exposure to arts. So aside from our wine bar and our paint nights, we do this as well. Mm -hmm. And so, so walk us through it here. I say to myself, you know, if I had a date, heaven forbid, uh, that let's go and have this experience. Walk us through it. We show up. What happens? Is someone giving instruction? Or are we, are we having a few glasses of wine and then just using stuff you have? Is it bring your own brush? How does the whole thing work? So it's the perfect date night activity, isn't it? Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's meant to challenge you, and it depends on the night that you're coming. So if you come for our um, guided session, you basically purchase a ticket online on our website. You pick the painting that you want to do on the night that you want to do. Mm. And then you'll come in, you're given all supplies, you're actually given appetizers. This is pre-COVID, this is how we used to run before. Right. You're given appetizers and we help you pair wine with those appetizers. And then you're seated down and you're given a two and a half hour instruction um, on how to paint from scratch. It's a lot of fun. People usually loosen up after a couple of glasses of wine or a couple of strokes of paint. Or a bottle. And then, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And then um, that's our guided sessions. And then right now, post-COVID, we have a freestyle painting on our patio, which means that you come on over to the patio. You can book a reservation anytime. It takes about two hours. You pick a painting that you like from our library of hundreds of paintings. Mm -hmm. And you're given all supplies. You get to take home your own pack of paintbrushes. And we help you a little. Like We'll give you a couple of tips and tricks. But people are really able to paint on their own, they forget how much creativity they have inside. So you come and like, we've had a lot of dates where like they're challenging each other, they don't see each other's paintings until the end. Uh, you flip it around, it's such a nice activity right. to do. It's a beautiful date night slash competition. Absolutely. <laughs> I think that's super fun. So tell us about your, your young entrepreneurs, you open this business, then we have this global pandemic. How did you pivot? How did you survive? How did you figure it out? 
So it was very difficult for us because when you build something and you put so much effort into creating something from scratch, when you're asked to change everything and all the expectations, it's something hard for us to wrap our heads around. So when everything shut down, we decided, well, we had to decide whether we were going to continue or whether we were going to go on a break. And we decided to continue, but this Pivot. time pivoting, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and we decided to take our business into the e-commerce industry. So we nice. started to create paint kits and we delivered paint kits by parcel and by like just courier um, all the way from here to Vancouver to Nunavut um, wow. and we even had uh, virtual classes online where people were joining from the United States and Europe. Wow, well, that's, mm -hmm. that's amazing. And then you got a patio as well, right? We got and that came afterwards. The, yes, yeah, so with patio. each stage, uh, we've pretty much developed three different business platforms yeah. in the last four months. Everybody so, did. So, yeah, and right. so we, we're kind of just the studio now. I love it, I love it. Just, Survivors. Just the studio. We're just well, the, the yeah, it's like we have to do the same thing. Yeah, yeah, we have to do the same thing. You know, but we're not allowed to work, but sort of work. But mm -hmm. it's great that everybody in Poor Credit just went like, okay, well, we're going to do this, and they thrive. Like that's thriving down there. And I hope you guys are doing well too. And, and for the people in the community who haven't found you yet, don't know what you do, what, what is the thing that you would like to let them know about your business and your space? So what's really, um really big for us even in all the phases that we've pivoted is to always support local and keep our um, keep our community strong with us yeah. so in this time that we for example have pivoted to open a patio we've been highlighting local chefs um, so we bring a different chef every weekend and we've That's been great. popping them up in our space because we don't have a kitchen right? right so to make the patio concept work we had to rely on pop-up chefs which has worked out so well because wow. people can come anytime, so it's repeat business, yeah. but you yes. get to meet a different chef and try different food, try a different menu every time you come down and have some drinks on our patio, and maybe even try your hand at painting. So that's what's really big for us, and we always, um, like from everything, from our masks to the artwork that's inside the studio to everything that we do. Even the wine, local. too. The yeah. wine is right. local, so we are. Uh, partnered with Corveste Wines, who's a local distributor, and they work with local family vineyards in Spain, Italy, and France. So we they kind imported. of bring, yeah, they imported in, so those wines are not available at the LCBO. Mm -hmm. And they are available at some local restaurants right. here, but specifically ours. And, and then you know we also great. have partnered with Stratus, Stratus. Peely Island, um, and what are and some other places? And like highlighting local wineries that have really good quality wines, kind of pushing that barrier that Ontario wines, Canadian wines are really amazing too. Right, sure they are. Mm -hmm. oh, sure. So it's Wednesday. What is the next event? You know, if we want to say, let's let's all go to the studio paint bar. Right. Um, what would be a good day for us to go? So we got a couple of things going on. So there's three things going on at once. So Thursday to Sunday, we have our pop-up patio going. So anytime awesome. for three to 10, you can come down to the patio on Thursday to Saturday. Sunday we open a little different, so two to nine. You can come down, you can grab a glass of wine, you can grab some food and enjoy the patio and the piazza and paint also. We also have- Sounds so European when you say yeah. so, uh, <laughs> We're bringing Europe to Port Credit. Hey, that's yes. that's what we want to do. It's just that Love joie it. de vivre, and, like sitting down and like, you know, chilling and watching life go by as you're enjoying food. There's so nothing wrong with being that. classy. You, know, right? you can't watch the Leafs on TV and eat wings all the time. No, so no, try to do something. So on the seventh day, Studio Paintbook. Exactly. Yeah, right. Now, how can people who are watching at home and go, that sounds fantastic, we have to do that. How can they find you online, Facebook, Instagram? Tell us all the stuff we need to know to find you. Okay, so our website, www.thestudiopaper.ca, you can see what's going on. You can see our virtual sessions that we're still continuing to leave because we're not sure when we can open inside. Um, and then you can also see like the different corporate events that we're doing. So they're all virtual as well. And then we also have um, reservation links on our Instagram. And Instagram features all of our really fun behind the scenes and features like pictures of parties that we've actually done, what the patio looks like, what right. the vibe is, who the chef is. So Great. Instagram's probably our best. And then Facebook also, we do announce. And what's your Facebook. Instagram handle? It's at the Studio Paint Bar. At the Studio Paint yes. Bar. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Lauren and Julia from the Studio Paint Bar. Young entrepreneurs with tons of energy, bringing a European vibe to Port Credit. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for yes, doing you, what ladies. you're doing. Thank and you. And we will be right back. Hey, everybody. Rickford here from the Tom and Rick Show. And on my right is Jimmy Reed. And on my left is Mr. Chris Cadell. And we're going to do a song by The Odds called It Falls Apart.
Well, CanCon. Welcome back, my friends. We are doing an experiment today on the Tom and Rick Show. We are going international. We have John Chantry on the line from the jungles of Ojital, Costa Rica. I met John years ago when we were both playing on the same circuit here in Canada, and he went and decided he was going to move to Costa Rica, open up a hotel music, live music venue, and um, lo and behold, COVID hit. And the hotel business is basically over, and the live music business is over. We've got John on the line. He's going to tell us what is going on. John, wonderful to see you. Thanks for coming on the show. Please tell us how things are going. Hey, Tom. Thanks for having us. Thanks, uh, thanks everybody up in Port Credit. Uh, to answer your question, down here in southern Costa Rica, there's, there's, not a, there's not a heck of a lot going on. The animals have kind of taken back over. 
right now looking out at the beautiful ocean. And uh, but I, what I was going to, you know, to answer your question, you know, we're not unlike all, all the rest of the musicians in the world, just trying to figure out what to do next. And and uh, especially having a bar and a restaurant, um, just trying to figure out what to do next. Um, but, but you know, at the same time, taking that time to um, be more creative and productive and, and do more songwriting that I've always really wanted to do. So, you know, at times like this, you have to turn lemons into lemonade and, and we're trying to make as much lemonade right now as possible. So we're here at the Bamboo Room here in Ojo Chal, Costa Rica. Uh, very empty bamboo, very desolate, uh, attached to our hotel, the Alma. And uh, this is my good buddy, Mr. Ken Nickel from Beagle, 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 Kansas. And if you get down to Beagle, I, I highly recommend you. I don't. I don't no, recommend you don't it at all. Uh, Anyways, we do a couple of week. Uh, he's a great songwriter, and uh, this is a song that's become very popular with a lot of folks down here over the last little while for, for you know, various reasons. But it's one of my, one of my favorite songs that's, uh, that Ken wrote, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. High Port, high port Credit, all, my, all, the, all the peeps back there, and this is a song called Hold You Forever. Thank you, Tom, for having us. 
Ladies and gentlemen, that was John Chantry and Ken from beautiful Costa Rica. I hope you guys can come back and see us when you're in town, and we will be right back. Hey guys, today we are going to make a beautiful antipasto platter on Cooking with Carson, and I got all this great produce in front of me. Check this out, this already looks fantastic, but my job's gonna be pretty easy. Um, I play a lot of music for uh, weddings, a lot of Italian weddings, and that was the first time I was introduced to the beautiful world of antipasto. Antipasto was traditionally the first course in um, a banquet or kind of a more classy meal that they would have in Italy, a celebration. And it's kind of evolved in North America to being this massive buffet of cured meats, seasonal vegetables, um, pickled vegetables like olives, red peppers, um, you name it, artichoke hearts, one of my favorites, and some great cheeses from all over Italy. Italy, of course, is, is the bomb for food. The different regions create all sorts of great produce and all sorts of great products that we enjoy all around the world. So let's get started. I have two trays here, um, two platters that I would use um, from Tom's. Like I remember we did sliders on this one for the wild game night. It was, uh, this is just great for for presenting those. This here is the bat for cricket when you're first starting and learning how to play because uh, that's not what it is. It's actually a fantastic platter. It has a handle for serving and this would be fantastic for a charcuterie board or for the antipasto that we're doing today. But um, I'm gonna use this other one that um, I pulled out earlier. This is just fantastic. You see it right there. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we are going to, um, you notice how I have a lot of these things already in glass jars. The reason being is for this one here, I have olives. Now we've all enjoyed olives. I cook with olive oil all the time as many of you at home are doing. And they're going to stain this board and to clean that we have to wash it really well. And then we're going to have to uh, sand out the, uh, the olive oil. Okay. Um, I have the breadsticks here as well. These are in this jar just to kind of give it some height for the presentation. And I have some caper berries. I'm putting them in this little ramekin right here. These aren't really a traditional uh, thing that you're going to see at an antipasto. Um, who am I kidding? In Woodbridge, you, do, you would see them because they have everything under the sun in those fantastic uh, parties that I've been at. But that's, these are all going to be in the jars, and I'm going to kind of work around them. Now, first of all, what I want to do is I want to move uh, the meat to one side of the plate because not everyone's a vegetarian and a, not everyone's a carnivore, I should say. There's a lot of vegetarians and vegans that might be at your party. And sometimes they just want, they don't even want to, they want to avoid a platter just because there's meat there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of this beautiful prosciutto right over here. Okay, I'm going to use all of it. Sometimes you can tear it. These are shaved really fine, okay? It's terrible, but it's terrible in the good sense. I had dad jokes before I had kids. I grew into my humor, it was crazy. This is some chorizo sausage, okay? Some beautiful Genoa salami. And notice these are nice little rounds here. I'm folding them up for a couple reasons. You can get more on the plate that way, okay? And they're not necessarily cooperating but they're great. Here I have some grilled zucchini. Everyone's garden right now is bursting with zucchini. We're gonna put these here. And what I did is I put a little bit of oil and salt and pepper, but if you watched my vinaigrette last a uh, couple weeks ago, that would work really well here. Just add some colors. I have some beautiful grilled red peppers. I'm just gonna place them down here, okay? Um, Check these out. These are on the, these guys are rolling away. These are on the vine cherry tomatoes. Beautiful, beautiful little guys. Anywhere on the plate, okay? Who doesn't like cheese? This is Bacconcini. What I've done here, I've got some of these balls of cheese. These are very much, these are mozzarella basically, okay? Some of them I leave them whole and some of them I've torn up, okay? And I'm just sticking them in here all in the same place. Let's lift these tomatoes out so they're not hiding down there. And then I have some herbs. Let's get the, sorry, let's get the olives in here. Everything on the platter. And herbs, I got some beautiful basil, basil if you will. And I'm just gonna tuck these in here. You can use beautiful like edible flowers as a garnish, but I think that's kind of a cheat. Now, edible flowers are just that, they're flowers that are edible. 
And if you've ever tasted them, they taste kind of like, well, they taste like flowers, okay? And flowers have a great fragrance, but they're not something you actually want to eat. This is sage that I just got yesterday from the uh, Facebook free cycle. Someone was giving away sage from the garden. And what we do is we always kind of think of food pairings that we're used to, but any herb is going to go great with tomatoes and cheese. And um, it's not just basil, okay? Here I have some Grana Padano. It looks exactly like Parmesan cheese, but it's actually another lactose-free, actually naturally lactose-free, hard cheese that you can use for grating. It's great with pasta, anything. And I have some, just some pieces that I'm going to put around here. They're fantastic. And then I have some stray tomatoes that I would put if I have empty spaces anywhere on the platter, okay? So let's move these behind me. And what you have here is a beautiful, if I do say so myself, a beautiful platter that would be great for serving at a party. It looks fantastic. Remember, when you're doing something like this, you're not doing this to show off, okay? You don't want to look like a superstar, but you're, what you're doing is you're doing this for your friends and family because you love them so much. They're very special to you, so you want to make sure that you treat them really well with something like this, okay? Super easy, fresh ingredients that you have at home, and uh, you can doctor them up to make them perfect for something like this. Try this at home. Back to you, Tom and Rick. Shore Grill and Grotto has always been a part of the community, and during these changing times, we are still here for you. Although things have changed, it's constant change that made us what we are today. Our restaurant is now open and is still committed to making fresh, fabulous food. We use only the highest quality ingredients to deliver great food consistently. Relax in our welcoming atmosphere with over 6,000 square feet of outdoor patios. Come and enjoy our outstanding customer service that caters to families and corporate events as well as private dining and functions in our event rooms. It is always what we have done. It is what we will continue to do. So, what are you doing? Drop by and see us. We would love to see you.